Hello there, my name is Florian. Yesterday I attempted to bring a live stream where I added a little um, improvement to the F-Sharp compiler to the parser area around SIN, around measurements, and uh, namely the SIN measurement param. This is a re-recording of that session. Um, I messed up the audio in the stream. There was a lot of echo noises, and that's why I'm giving this another shot. The uh, the goal of the stream and you know bringing this kind of content out there is just that I uh, started a freelance business um, a while ago, and I just want you know let people know that I'm into this kind of stuff and that I've um, had the luxury to work on the compiler as a contractor and I'm open for any of this kind of work. So let's just dive in. Fair warning, I already know the answer um, to all the solutions. I'm just going to try and capture the same story beats that I had in the live stream, do the exact same thing and hope for a bit of a better audio quality. So let's dive in. So let's start with our initial problem statement. A bug was reported in Phantomus. Phantomus is the F-sharp uh, formatter, which uses the F-sharp compiler. And the issue in this case is when a, a bit of a complex measure is introduced, it can have parentheses, but when executed, uh, sorry, when used in an expression, the parentheses are lost. And if we look at the AST of this uh, snippet. So I'm going to open Phantomus Tools. This is an online tool um, which helps development of Phantomus and sort of goes over different phases. So this video is not really about Phantomus today, but um, it is related, so that's why we're, we're stopping by here. So you can see um, this was formatted, but the parentheses are gone. And this, you know, you can't really see here that this code doesn't work anymore, but that's what the user reported, and of course I believe that. So if we look at this AST tab, we're going to get a untyped syntax tree, um, you know, of the original. And if we um, look for hours a week, this is going to be so both defined as a record expression and a record instance. And in the record instance, there is a constant, which is a 40, which is a measure. And that measure has a divide from which is out of two pieces. So there's the char, and then there's a sequence which contains another sequence, which has this stuff and this weeks. But there is no notion of parentheses, and that's sort of um, that's annoying because Phantomus uses this exact tree to reconstruct the uh, the source code. And because this information is lost, it would just be tremendously helpful if this was captured in the syntax tree to begin with. So I raised an issue in the .NET F# -sharp repository. Um, same example here. So we have this. There are no parentheses in the matching AST. I noticed in the parser that there is a point where parentheses are accepted, and this would then not capture um, only capture the measure and nothing about the parentheses itself. So I um, I raised the issue and asked if we could have this. And Don agreed that we could, so that's why I'm um, heading into this. And, and in this video, I'm just gonna try and implement it. When we uh, take a look, so there is documentation on uh, you know the syntax tree and a lot of stuff for the F# -sharp compiler. When we look at this sin measure node type, that's what's representing our measure. This is a union case. It can have a lot of things, but the one missing is parentheses, and that's the what we're going to try and add in this video. Going to my terminal, I'm in the F-Sharp repository, I created a branch, and what I did uh, up front was call the build cmd and dash no visual studio. This will build everything and um, only you know target the compiler bits, so not the visual studio tooling but only the compiler itself, and that's where we're, we're going to start. So we're really are going to capture this first in the core of the compiler and then see if we need to do any changes for tooling, but I'm not really expecting this. And again, this is a re-recording. There are no, you know, spoiler, there are no changes. Um, the branch, you know, what we're going to do in this video is already out there. So if we head back to, to GitHub, we can see over here, there's already a linked pull request. Um, 
but we're just going to repeat that and I'll try to go over the same process. So let's move on to my uh, editor. So I'm using Writer today. I opened the F# -sharp compiler service uh, solution. So there are a couple of solutions. The Visual F# -sharp one is the one that contains all the projects. But as I said, we're not interested in the tooling here. So we are going to um, go into the compiler itself. When we open this, there is a folder parser run type tree, and we're first just going to introduce our nodes in the syntax tree file. Let's start with the signature file. So I have this in measure here, and I'm basically going to add a, uh, a case. And first I'm going to look uh, into paren. So there are a couple of other cases where parentheses are already captured. So for example, in syntype over here. So syntype is uh, everything with type definitions. There you already, we already capture the parentheses. The same with syntax expressions, parentheses are captured. Notice that in syntype, the range of parentheses and the inner type is just captured. For expression, there is a left and a right parentheses. The right is optional. That's sort of with, um, you know, with recovery syntax. If you're still typing, but you don't have closing parentheses, we can still have three, so that's useful for editors. But if we look here, we only have the range. If we look at another example for patterns, we only have the range. So I feel this is two out of three. Let's just, you know, take the same approach and um, do it for measure. So if we head back to send measure, we're just going to add this one in here. A parenthesis measure. And I'm just going to change this to send measure. So this was a signature file. I need to, um, of course, add it to the implementation as well. So if I go over here, right or already notice, let me know that there is a, um, yeah, there is an error. So the signature file and the implementation don't, add, don't align, they don't add up. So let's just add this over here like this. And then parentheses are in there. What we can do now is already build a compiler and see what, what impact this has. Um, so what I'm expecting is that a couple of places where some measure are pattern matched, um, that we will have a missing case now. Let's first fix that. If I build the project, it is going to um, do the full build. And so the plan is to first, you know, capture the, the definition of what we want in the syntax tree, then create a failing test and then, you know, tackle the parser itself to solve our failing test. So we can see there are a couple of places where we have an incomplete match as expected. So when, you know, measures are type checked, we need to add our case here. Um, so in this case, let's just add it in. So basically parentheses, um, just, you know, has a, uh, a measure. And from, from that point of view, um, yeah, the letter M is also used for uh, ranges. So let's maybe just write it in full. So we're just going to pass this through. And basically the parentheses are good to have for like tooling and phantomus. But you know you don't need them to get to your binary, so you just throw them away at some point, and that's what we're doing in this type check function. I don't need to know the in the inner workings of how you know type checking is being done on measure for this thing because we're just throwing it away. This is a recursive function, so let's call that an S. We're just gonna call it, and uh, that's gonna be good enough for now. There's nothing to do, you know. In the higher levels of the compiler, so this is really for the initial phases. We need to capture the tree, but that's about it. So, okay, that was the first issue, and then the same. So this is where um, the uh, syntax tree is being walked over. So let's just add it over here as well. Um, like that. And then, you know, whatever measures in here is just going to be passed, etc. 
So from the compiler point of view, what we're adding here isn't super relevant, but it is more from like the, the tooling perspective and correctness. For the tooling, the correctness of the syntax tree is very important that you know this information is just added there. So now I'm gonna build the compiler again. And while that's happening, let's already jump to a test. There's a file called symbols in uh, Azure Compiler Service Tests, and there a lot of um, you know type um, you know untyped trees are being checked and being really assert you know tests that assert that the parser is still doing what we what we expect. So there are a lot of modules over here uh, from past things. What we're basically going to do is you know take a um, take a module and then shape it up to, to be our model for um, for measures. So all the tests are more or less the same. They just you know take a um, a text bit of input. They get the parser results. This is a helper function, and then we're just pattern matching try to match the you know exact shape of um of our expression and if that um shape matches then we do some assertions mostly on the ranges so we want to make sure that the ranges are okay um, we'll get to that in a bit but that's mostly for you know regression testing you want to know very early on that if you change anything in the parser what we have today will still keep on working um, so what I typically do is assert fail if you know the shape here isn't what I've expected that it would be. And let's maybe just update our snippets to what we had over here. So given this expression, we're expecting a top module declaration expression. The expression itself is going to be our uh, sin expression constant. So we can look up all these things again in the syntax tree files. Um, I know a couple of these things by by heart by now. So um, what we're having here is a synconst measure. And inside that measure are going to be um, the things that we're expecting over here. So we know we have a syn measure divide. Again, this is a re-recording, so I already know a couple of these things. So when inside the divide we have another measure. So the first measure was uh, may have been a sequence as well. Yes. So there's the divide over here. It takes a sequence. It takes you know the divide itself takes two other measures and a range probably. So let's just take the sequence. It's named and then sees this sequence is actually now we're expecting that this bit is wrapped in parentheses. So let us just take a sequence. Sequence takes a list and a range. We don't care about the exact range for now. So for the divides. I'm expecting that this was okay. Uh, the measure itself has a range. So this is the divides and um, the range. And so the sin const, the measure itself. Yes, exactly, it has a constant. So this is the, the 42 that we need to add here. So this is another sync const. It is of a uint uh, 32 or, mm, yes, uint 32. So this is actually our, our 40. Uh, there's a range for the 40 and that should be it, I believe. All right, this is already mostly what we had. So inside of here, the HR is just going to be like a sin measure names. Of this names, this takes a long ident, which is um, 
a list of items. So in this case, there, there's only one identifier. So let's make this the HR items. It takes a list and a range. We don't care about the range at this point. Then over here, we're expecting that we have our sin measure paren. So this will then be wrapped in the parentheses. The paren takes another sin measure and a range. The other sin measure will then also be a sequence. So at this point, I don't necessarily know why is this first name wrapped in a sequence. Um, that might be for legacy reasons, might have another good reason. Um, could look into that at like a later point, but um, will not be you know covered in this video. We have our sequence over here, so let's add those two names as well. And again, this is all you know the syntax tree model. So um, if this looks a bit foreign, it's just because you know you're not that familiar with the model. But the more you do these things, especially using the online tool, it gets pretty clear what what is, and you sort of learn more things the more you, you look at it and it can be overwhelming at first but it actually isn't all that much it's just a bunch of active pattern uh, sorry it's a bunch of discriminate unions and some other structures and types and that just represents you know the code types so um that's more or less it so we're going to um, do some assertions on the items that those are correct and first let's just run this unit test to see that you know we didn't touch the parser yet so the parentheses you know won't be in the tree captured yet so this is going to fail and we should get this message over here and could not get valid ast you know when we look at this ast it is you know exactly what we had before um or in the online tool so that's you know our failing tests and we can now look into the parser when we look at the same parse folder here the parser itself is using um, fseac and it sort of has grammar rules to construct the syntax tree nodes um, this is a long file there's no intel sense there are bits of f sharp but there are also bits of uh, what you know how the grammar rules work it can be quite overwhelming but again you'll sort of learn to appreciate these things the more you're, you're heading in here um, this whole thing gets you know converted to an F sharp file by FSEAC we can take a look at that later and what we're going to do here now is just what is the existing uh, story so where are any sin measures made here and there are a couple of grammar rules that that match this so this is the names that we use the var we can already see our suspects so this has a l paren um, the uppercase one is a token this is another grammar rule and if we take a look at you know other constructs um, these are all being created here in a first glance it really looks like this is the place we, we want to be Inside these curly braces, you can write some uh, regular F# -sharp codes. The dollar two is then something special to the to the grammar. So the dollar two indicates whatever expression that comes out of here. So if we look at the definition of this, we'll see that oh, this returns already a sin measure. So that's our inner type that we want to capture. And here, this is a token, and this is another rule. So why is this? R paren not a token. Uh, that's basically how the, the lexer works. So it pumps up different um, tokens and the parser sort of looks ahead. And at this point, there are a couple of like non existing tokens, but that do indicate that hey, the parentheses is coming or is here. And yeah, that's just how the, the lexer kind of works. I won't really go into detail, but there's. Um, there's just like looking up ahead and then there's a sort of pump system inside of the lecture that really gets the tokens there. And for certain offset rules, it's interesting to know that, you know, the right parentheses is at least coming on yes or not. 
And, uh, well, that, you know, just um, brings us to back to our uh, case that we had. So, apologies. All right, the parentheses. We don't care about the individual parentheses. We, to, con to construct our node, we just want to, to get the range. And we can use a helper function for that. So I'm going to say let m. Um, this is like a agreement within the compiler. Like I'm not really sure what m stands for, but it's used all over the place to indicate ranges. And what we can do is use the helper function right hand side two and take in the parse state. Parse state is an object that is you know given to every grammar rule of the parser and contains information of you know what you're capturing right here. And then we can say parse stage one to three. If we look at the definition of this right hand side two, it um, you know takes the parse state, it gets the input position at the start of the input, sorry, the input position at the start of i and the end position of j and then it creates no syntax range. So this really captures, you know, from start to end and that's what we're after. Okay. now have this guy and we're, we're having a range so let's just construct our sin measure that paren so it just takes the you know inner expression as the first argument and then it will take the range uh, over here and that's going to be you know good enough in order for this file to be yacked we need to rebuild our uh, salute our project because you know the not, not, not really sure if it's the tooling or it's as builder, you know, whatnot. But you need to, you know, create the F# -sharp file again from this FSY file, and we can trigger that by doing a rebuild. So this does a lot of magical stuff. Um, I sort of know my way around this file and don't know all the inner workings. Um, but basically, you sort of pick things up along the way, like the, the right hand side 2 and it just takes indexes of the thing, it is zero, uh, it's one based, not zero based. If you use dollar and then identify it, then you're just taking the expression that you that your grammar rule has. So um, yeah, little bits and pieces, but again, this is all less and less scary the more you're here. So we are creating our builds so this first thing is all you know the parser parser on lexer the build finished and i'll now actually open the file in visual studio code um just because this is a quite a large file and um my editor can struggle with it so let me just zoom in a bit so this is the exact same file, but you know, generated by FSYAC. And what we're going to do now is just take a look at our sin measure paren. So there's one instance um, that's being created, the underscore two, this is our dollar two, and then you know the, the range was here. And the capturing of it, like the, the grammar rule itself was, you know, is also being converted. So this just grabs your data from the parser. Um, and we'll then eventually like reference a, a different function as well. So good stuff, good stuff. Um, we'll go really into more detail, but you know, that's uh, the F sharp piece we're after. And when I now run my unit test again, I'm already uh, expecting that this will work. Did. So now we know the um, the shape matches, and I just start noticing somebody is 
a neighbor's long is long, so hope that doesn't mess up the audio now. Um, cool, so we have the parentheses over here. Let's just grab that range and, and do like a assertion there. Let's also assert that the HR range, staff rate, weeks range is all, you know, the identifiers that we, that we expect they are. So let's just do like a R equal. Uh, so this should be HR. We can, uh, items is a struct that, you know, takes a text and a range. And so we can get the, the text over here. So let's just do repeat those a couple times. So HR one for staff and one for weeks. Uh, weeks items. And then we can use the helper function assert range to verify a range. So it just takes two tuples and it has our range. Um, but we look at our snippets, this is line one, this is line two, line three. So at line two, the start of this, um, who is this? Uh, so the lines are one based, the columns are zero based. So we just grab the length over here. So I believe it starts line nine, sorry, column nine. So two nine. And then it ends over here. So let's just check how long that is. Maybe two, and I'm still expecting that test to pass. Okay, great. Um, before we can sort of wrap up the changes here, there's one thing you also need to do because we changed the syntax tree. We changed the public API of the F-Sharp compiler package and there's a unit test that you know keeps track of that as well. So this is a surface area test. When we run this one, we'll sort of see that this fails because what we expect that the API is doesn't match the actual API that's being you know generated. So if we you know take a look at our um, actual file, so let's just Open that one up. These are all just you know types and, and methods of you know everything that's in the FCS. When we're going to look for sin measure, we should see our uh, sin measure dot param. So this was added, but it's you know not in the expected. Um, long story short, what you mostly do is just you copy paste um, everything from the actual to the Expect it. I have a little helper function for that in PowerShell. And if we now look at our source control, what we have here, the surface area, expect it. We'll see that you know our stuff that we added in here is being added to the file. Some things are shuffled around, so I'm not really sure why that is, but we you know, can see that this was added and it's also added to the public API. And I think this test more or less exists to, you know, um, the people reviewing PRs are aware that, um, you know, the, the uh, public API of the F-Sharp compiler changed and if they're okay with that or not. So this is something that, you know, really needs approval by the F-Sharp team for good reason. And that's why there, that's in, that's in here. Okay, so as a last step, we could uh, close Rider and um, go back to the terminal. So I'm not gonna run it in, oh damn it. Yes, well, yes I do. What I tried to say is what we could do here is run builds and this will also build the Visual Studio bits. So remember, we changed a discriminated union, so any pattern matches might break. So potentially, this is you know the changes that we have now are not enough because something else in the F# -sharp solution and the Visual F# -sharp solution could use it. So that's why we could execute the build CMD. As I said, we already done this. I kind of know that this code will work, um, so that's okay. 
and this is also you know run on the CI job can actually also maybe take a look at that so our result over here when we got here we have the same thing the same files that are changed um, this is all more or less of the same and going back to the conversation you can see there are like 16 checks uh, that run on Azure DevOps and there really are like a lot of builds that run a lot of tests um, stuff that we didn't cover so this is all green because everything we changed didn't really get exposed outside of the f -sharp compiler service so that's the, that's the sweet spot but potentially when you do changes you might break existing regression tests and these are all really covered here so um, the fact that this is all green i'm very confident that you know our change is acceptable and that was all. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you're interested in more stuff, please um, reach out. I'm on the F-Sharp uh, Foundation Slack. I'm on Discord. Um, you can reply to this YouTube link. You can email me, whatever works for you. Hope to see you again sometime. Take care. Cheers.